no-brainer MMA. I'm your host, Connor. This is your other host, Dan. What's up, Dan? Doing pretty good. I uh, hit $1,100 bet last night. Um, so you can't be mad about that. No, not at all. Um, yeah, I went five or six on the main card, all in a day's work. That's what we do. Yeah, though. I didn't, but like, I guess. Who cares? You want, you got, you're in the money. And I know. You, I'm good with over unders. Yeah, you are actually. I don't like them at all. I always do the money line. I, I rarely do the under, over under, but it's a smart bet. It's a smart bet. I don't bet smart. <laughs> I mean, all my bets were like three to five legged parlay. So I don't really bet smart. Yeah, that's like all of mine too. It's like five, four, five. I can't help it. I can't help it. But uh, this fucking wires fucking up my life. Um, you'll see. Yeah, Tanner Bozer has lost all my respect. Like, not has lost all my hype as a UFC fighter. Why? Like, it's not like, dude. He was he he was out wrestled by Latifi. Man, he's he's a big fucking dude, and he's a He's an Olympic. Is he Olympic? He no. He's a national team wrestler for for the Swedish team. But still, like that's a fucking. He's not. He's not a slouch. That's gonna happen. He did it to Derek Lewis too. He did the like, the same fucking thing, you know. Except this time. Yeah, and I thought Derek Lewis lost that fight to be completely honest. Yeah. I thought, yeah, dude. You look back at that. It's it's close. It's a split decision. It's it's a tough fight. But uh, yeah, I I don't take it too much. He's I re- I still really like Tanner Bowser. I really do, but um. I mean, I, I don't hate him. Yeah, well, it's just like he went. He was going on a streak where he had such great lateral movement, and then just was boom, just knocking people out. And then he just looks so tentative now. It's it's weird. He is he's quick too, so it's a shame that he's not really using like all that. And he moves constantly. That's his thing. He's a light. He's a light dude. He weighs like two hundred and thirty-five pounds. Yeah, he's quicker than Stepe. He weighs like the same amount. Yeah, he's fast as hell. But yeah, he was just out wrestled. No one ever tested his wrestling in the UFC, and it's just now I think everyone turned out. Oh, he's got another hole in this game. Not only does he get tentative in the big moments, he also can't stop the takedown. For the most part. Well, Latifi uh, is is sick, you know. Latifi like, yeah. is great. Yeah, he's at wrestling. At wrestling, he's sick at rest. That's about it. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into this. UFC 263. Yeah, big card, Huge fun card. card. Huge. I card. think we're. In. What? We, can, we, we can make something off of this. Oh, dude, I'm confident in a lot of these, especially as it goes on. Like towards the I main point. Connor, I was like, I'm feeling good about these picks, and he didn't respond. But when yesterday? No, today. <laughs> oh, you did today. I was recovering yeah. today, dude. Dude, I feel I feel so good about some of these picks. Well, I do too. I'm I'm agreeing with you. I'm saving it for the podcast. I'm saving it for the content. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, he doesn't want to let. We don't even spoil things for ourselves. That just shows how much we fucking yeah. Dedication you're talking about and yeah, the tra- hard work and dedication. Just yeah, for you guys. Yeah, we should trademark that. Hard work and dedication. Someone definitely already did. And I know. It's right, strike us if they wanted, probably. <laughs> take, me to, take me to fucking court. Yeah, we're we're. I literally. What are you, come on. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna take? What are you gonna do? You gonna take Dan's thousand bucks? Come on. What are you gonna do? Yeah, uh, Eleven hundred bucks. All okay. right. I'm getting into it. Carlos Felipe, Jake Collier kicking off UFC two sixty three. We're looking at main card: Israel Adesanya, Marvin Vittori, Davison Figueredo, Brandon Moreno, Leon Edwards, Nate Diaz. That's like the top three. And we're gonna Stacked get right card top bottom in my opinion. Hell yeah. Great card. I can't wait to watch this. I'm going to be away for this too. I'm going to have to drop everything I'm doing. I'm going to, I'm going to have to watch it. Um, uh, all right. So we're going to get into the early pre- prelims, Carlos Felipe versus Jake Collier. Carlos Felipe, two and one in the UFC on a two fight winning streak 
most recently coming off a very close split decision win over Justin Tapa. He's a stand-up fighter, Muay Thai style, with six wins coming by KO, TKO. That was a dope fight, by the way. That was. Hell of a fight. They threw hands. Both they threw hands. Believe they threw kind of like the harder hands. I think that's what's slightly gotten of the way, you know? But do you, we, we saw Tafa recently. He didn't look good in his last time out. When was that, two weeks ago? Yeah, he didn't. But he looked, he looked very tentative, like he didn't want to get beat up like he did that last time, you know? He broke his hand, too, I think. Um, he's a one-sided fighter, uh, never landing a takedown in the UFC. I don't think he's ever going to – he actually did attempt one, but he, he's – Attempted two, actually. He's taken on Jake Collier one and one since coming back from a three-year layoff and went up, like, two weight classes. Yeah, he used to be a middleweight, then he was a light heavyweight, and then he... Now he's, like, 265. Yeah, he's, like, rumble, but not, you know, a knockout artist that no. is intimidating at all. No, he, doesn't hit, he doesn't have a lot of knockouts. I um, mean, rumble only fought one fight at middleweight. I'll give him that. But that's still. true, because he looked, like, anorexic. Yeah, it's 7.30. I'm drinking Starbucks coffee for you guys. So just that's just to show how much I love you guys. We appreciate that, Dan. Um, Jay Collier, three out of the four of his UFC wins have come by decision. He's been KO'd three times also in the UFC, so his chin is kind of questionable. He's only been a little yeah. And only has a 40% striking accuracy over the course of his last three fights. So... He's not really landing too I mean, much. one of the fights was against Tom Aspinall where he lost in like 30 seconds. Yeah, that was a brutal fight. And I, I do see this fight uh, staying on the feet, so I'm going to go with Carlos Felipe, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not too confident with this one. I mean, yeah, this is what I took away from the tape and everything else. Um, Carlos Felipe, he's... He's a strong psyker, striker that wants to take the center of the octagon. You know, he's pushing you against the fence and he's just throwing bombs at you. Uh, he's actually a lot quicker than you think a 260 pound guy would be. Like, he's pretty, he can, he can throw some pretty quick hands. Uh, not, he's not afraid to stand in the middle of the octagon and just throw strikes. He's got a pretty granite chin. He took everything at the top of the head in that fight that we were talking about. Um, I would call him a pressure fighter, too, to be honest. And look at his resume so far. Um, I have to pull it up again. Fuck. Oh, good. But, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, since he arrived in the U UFC, he's... Two and one, he beat Jorgen de Castro. He lost the majority more majority decision to Sergey Spivak. And he won that banger of a fight against Justin Tafa. I think he's due for a knockout. And I think that Jake Collier is the perfect guy to be knocked out. But I'll go into Jake Collier a little bit. Um, two fights ago, we got absolutely demolished by Tom Aspinall. Um, we talked about his weight and, um, and how his chin is an issue. Uh, he got knocked out by middleweights when he was fighting there, so now that he's a heavyweight, like, he could definitely get knocked out. Uh, but he is pretty athletic for the division, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, and like the the speed with Felipe, I think Felipe actually might be a little quicker. I think so. Um, it's it's think. hard. It's harder. It's hard to judge. It really is from watching one fight and another. And you're trying to compare the two. Yeah, it's it's tough. But uh, yeah, he showed impre impre uh improvements in his last fight against John Gian Vellante. I know Vellante is more of a light heavyweight, but still, uh, he's honestly light on his feet with solid movement and that's a heavyweight so i'm impressed yeah jake hollier impressed me a lot more than i thought but yeah even though he has improved in the heavyweight division fleet base pressure and power is going to be too much hollier moves forward but he doesn't have the power that 
Felipe has. I think Felipe is going to knock him out. Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know about a knockout, but I'm going maybe decision win, possible knockout, but yeah, we are, we're good. We're both going with, excuse me, we're both going with Carlos Felipe in this one. Moving right into the next one. Fairs Ziam versus Luigi Vendramini. You want this one, Dan? You want me to do this one? Um, I take it. You want? Take, take it away. And then you got the Matt. Actually, no, then you got the T Super one. T Super one, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so I'll start I'll start with, with Ziam. Um, he's a Frenchman, only 20, 24 and 20, these guys are 24 and 25 years old. So this is a battle with some pretty young prospects. Uh, yeah, so Ziam, he's only 24 years old, great striker movement. Uh, t- like his te- he's pretty technical on his strikes as well. He's becoming a more well-rounded UFC, but not UFC, an MMA fighter. Uh, he's grappling better. He's doing all that better. Uh, secured a takedown and just went over Jamie Mulharkey, which was pretty impressive. His leg kicks are super nice, as well as all of his other kicks. He's he's a solid kickboxer. Uh, his ground, yeah, like I said, his ground game isn't bad either. Uh, Malarkey was actually on top of one part at one point in the fight, and Ziam was able to sweep him and get on top himself. So it kind of like secured the win for him. Uh, so Luigi, he um, he's coming off that head kick knockout. Um, do you, do you remember that? Yeah. That 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 was a pretty sick KO, in my opinion. No, that was wild. And then what's it called? I mean, he hit he hit him with something fir- first, and then he like timed the head kick beautifully. He's called the Italian stallion, even though he's Brazilian. So like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But I never got that either. Um, before that, he was coming off of like a he was coming off an over two year layoff slightly. Uh, where he lost a uh, knockout to Elizio Zaleski. Oh, Zaleski dos Santos. Yeah. Yeah, Zaleski dos Santos. Exactly. I, I never noticed him until they say the uh, dos Santos. Yeah, <laughs> he's good too. So you're making your yeah. debut against that guy. That's impressive. Yeah. Like that's tough. It was in 2018 though. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, all I'm gonna say is. Stay away from this fucking fight because there's a good chance someone's getting knocked the fuck out. <laughs> um, very good chance. Uh, I'm gonna take the smile, the smile killer in Varas Ziam because really? I think he's a little bit more well rounded. Okay. And his wrestle, like you know, and I think that he's gonna be able to strike with him, and that he is gonna be able to take him down. So he has more keys to victory, in my opinion, but the odds are just about even. Yeah. It's like at it's literally like the almost even. I think it's gonna be a pick on the end. Yeah, it, it is very close. Uh, but you're going with Fair Ziam? Yeah. Yeah, Ziam one and one in the UFC. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't too impressed with what he's shown us so far he's been taken down eight times in his first two ufc fights and only landed one of nine of his tame downs he attempted yeah. not to mention only 1.9 strikes per minute uh he's gonna be taking on luigi vadramini who also won one in the ufc losing his debut that like dan said by ko to zaleski dos santos very tough fight though a tough way to kick off your ufc career yeah. um that he was fighting at 170 instead of 155 in that fight by the way He's back to 155. So that was all. He was also at a weight disadvantage. Uh, he was able to get back on the right tra- track in October with a KO win in 2020. All nine pro <laughs> MMA wins have come by finish five KOs, four subs. He trains with a lot of good guys too uh, Ronnie Yaya, Fran- Francisco Chinaldo, uh, Renato Moicano, all guys he, really, who he, are really. He, he black belt. All guys who are really great grapplers. Mm-hmm. And since Ziam also likes to take the fight to the ground, um, I think that he's 
Vegramini is well versed on the ground, and I think that he whatever he puts at him on the ground, he'll be able to just adjust to. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with Luigi. Luigi. I like Luigi in that one. But uh, yeah, we're disagreeing. Dan's going Fair ZM. I'm going Luigi Vegramini, and we're gonna move right into the next one. Steven Peterson versus Chase Hooper. Dan's been chomping at the bit to get this next one. Yeah, why not? But yeah. Chase Hooper, one in three under the UFC umbrella, really great grappler and submission artist. Is very green, only 21 years old. Uh, a lot of room to improve, uh, specifically in his striking. Uh, it's which is his biggest downfall right now. It's all it's it's maybe the worst in the UFC. It, it's and the stat you look at the stats, you're like, oh, it's not bad. But once you you know you see him fight, you're like, ah, oh. it's the ground strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know? that's all it is. Yeah, he's got very low takedown accuracy, only seven percent. He likes to uh, pull guard a lot. Um, but for even for a guy that a guy that likes to grapple, seven percent takedown accuracy, that is not good. Um, oh yeah, it just it looks like that came from the Caceres fight and his last fight. Yeah, that's what I'm he saying. Was able to secure a hail mary like knee bar, I believe, or heel hook or something. Yeah, like he was that. getting beat up by Peter Barrett for a while. Yeah, we both took we both took Peter Barrett in that yeah. fight. If I'm not mistaken. Um, it also looks like Hooper doesn't have the same strength as the other UFC featherweights, in my opinion. Um, he's going to be taking on Steven Peterson, two and three in his last five, just broke a two-fight losing streak with a comeback spinning back fist KO back in 2019. He's got a minus 1.29 striking differential, only 35% striking accuracy, but he does get two takedowns a fight um, all at, and 75% takedown defense. Peterson also has a great grappling game, so I don't think Hooper will be able to sub him. Um, I just think that uh, he'll be able to outmuscle him, beat him up on the feet, and he, he's good on the ground. So um, I, I don't think he's got to worry too much. Peterson is right. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said Chase Hooper was going to outmuscle him. I was about to just leave. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go Peterson. Yeah, the UFC is basically giving Chase Hooper like the easiest possible matchup, but I think Peterson wins as well. Yeah, so isn't that, isn't that terrible? Terrible? He, Like his striking is no matter what, kind of like miles ahead of Chase Hooper. So, I'm and gonna, he's not even known for his striking. He's like more of a grappling guy, Peterson, anyway. But he's but he, not, he's not going to take Hooper down. He's going to just strike with him. Yeah, and avoid the knee bar that so he's going to going for yeah i don't think he'll be able to sub him i know hooper's really good on the ground with his but i know peterson's no slouch all right so we're agreeing oh, not, not a slouch whatsoever whatsoever we're both going steven peterson in this one we're agreeing next one moving right into the next one matt frivola versus frank the crank camacho yeah so this is going to be my lock of the prelims lock of the prelims um yeah lock of the Lock of the early prelims. How about that? Um, I was gonna say where, like, dude, my computer is bugging out, but there we go. Um, yeah. So Frivola is coming off of a decision loss to Armin Suzukian, but that is again nothing to hang your head about. You know, we say that a lot, but it really is nothing to hang your head. Would you yeah, agree? Yeah, because so many people are tough and so many people are good at this level that it's like you lost to him. Yeah, okay, I can see that. That might happen. Yeah. Um, but looking back throughout his career, uh, I know he got knocked out by Marco Polo Reyes. Um, but he fought Lando Venata to a draw, he beat Jalen Turner, and he beat Luis Pena. Uh he's pretty damn solid and Frank Macho, on the other hand, I don't want to bash the guy too hard, but like his last two outings have not gone well at all. Um, he lost to Benil Darius again. He's now top five. Yeah. But let me read you since 2018 who he's fought, and you're going to feel bad for him. Dude, I feel he so bad. Drew Dover, Jeff Neal. Then he got a win over Nick Hines. 
thank God. Neil Darius, Justin James. Um, but the Justin James fight sealed it for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. He he took too much punishment in those fights. Lost a head kick knockout to Jeff Neal. He's also fought Li Xiang Wang, where he obviously lost as well. Yeah, uh, yeah I got Matt Vola in this fight all day. All day. Uh, he might get a finish, he might not, but either way, Matt Vola is going to win. Um, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I totally agree with you on this one. Frank Camacho, one in four in his last five, against that really great competition that you just said. His He has a really fun fighting style. He loves to just stand and exchange punches, but that seems to be like a double-edged sword for him because that mentality seems to get him into a lot of trouble. Like, he's lost twice by KO since 2018. He got subbed his last time out. He's taken on Matt Favola in this one, 2-2-1 two, two, and one his last five. He's a wrestler, averages 2.6 takedowns per fight, wins mostly by decision, a real gamer, pretty well-rounded. He knows how to get the win. Yeah. His striking isn't that great. He has a minus 0.71 striking differential and only 37% striking accuracy. This fight, this fight either ends with a like a, Cam a Camacho KO, that's the only way he wins, or Favola it just is able to dominate him, dominate him and get a grind out a decision win over him. Um Yeah, I just yeah, I just like think that Camacho is an on Favola's level and Favola takes like like, but just the one sided unanimous decision, most likely. I agree. I agree. All right. So, we're both going Matt for Matt for Vola in that one. We're going to move right into the next one Panny Kianzad versus Alexis Davis. Yes, sir. That's me, right? Or is this you? No, it's you. Take the floor. Panny Kianzad, three and two in the UFC on a, three, on a three fight winning streak. Striker. She's got a Plus 1.52 striking differential, averages over five strikes per minute, 83% takedown defense, wins mostly by decision. She has 13 out of her 16 wins have come by decision. She's taken on Alexis Davis, two and three in her last five, breaking a three-fight losing streak in her last time out against Sabina Mazo. She's very well-rounded and can stand, but does mix it up with some takedowns. She's going to be turning 37 in a couple of months, though, but her fights are still very competitive. She's like... For if someone 37, like you expect them to decline like dramatically, and it's you know, she's still fighting at a very competitive level. Uh, yeah. I do think this fight is close in my head, I see it close. Um, but I'm gonna go with the younger fighter that has the more volume, and since I think the fight's staying on the feet, uh, I'm gonna go Penny Kianzad. Yeah, uh, Penny Kianzad's been obviously working on her takedown defense because everybody tries to get it out of the way. Let's be real here. Like, every single fighter she fights is always trying to take her down. Have you noticed that? Yeah, and, and she does a pretty good job, honestly. She does a pretty good job when people know, like, she's a striker, you know? And yeah. I think she, she's gonna, you know, they just go and take her down the entire time. She started off her UFC career kind of rough. Uh, she's actually an Ultimate Fighter alum. Uh, she beat Julia Stoyleranko on it. Uh, she lost the finale to Macy Johnson, but Macy Johnson's kind of making a run right now. Yes. It's looking like almost maybe a title run. Um, won her last, won her next fight, and then lost to Julia Velia. But that's again nothing to hang your head about. And then her last three fights, she looked great against Jesse Jess, Jessica Rose Clark, uh, Beth Coea, and Sajari Eubanks. Um, yeah, I got Panny all day in this fight. She, whatever, I for Yeah, her stand-up is just nasty. She's like a volume striker that just needs to keep the fight standing. If she keeps the fight standing, she's going to pick Alexis Davis apart, and Alexis Davis's face is going to look let me just say one thing about um, Alexis Davis. Her last fights, the last five fights, Liz Carmouche, Caitlin Chikagian, Jennifer Maya, Vivian Arujo, and Sabina Mazo. So that's pretty solid competition for your last fights. That's tough. Yeah. Don't uh, worry about uh, This is a close fight. I don't know what the odds look like this second, but this is a close fight. I'm not confident with this one. I love Panny Kianzad, but it's, it's very close in my, in my head. I would bet decision. Yeah. 
I mean, I'll throw I'll throw an over two and a half or goes the distance. Yeah, put it over two and a half. That's fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, what well, 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 when I feel was when it says goes the distance, it's just like you think it goes to a decision, you know? Right. Over two and a half, most of those fights, you're like, eh, that's probably the All right. We're agreeing on that one. Both going Panny Kianza, moving right into the next one. Hakeem Dawadu versus Mazbar Evloev. This one I'm very excited for. Yeah, so Evloev, um, we've talked about him multiple times. Uh, former uh, M1 fighter and then UFC experience. So he has fought some really good competition his entire career. Uh, super well-rounded fighter with his only weakness really being takedown defense, but then he always gets back up super quick. So, yeah. so it's not even like a real weakness. Uh, what's it called? Dawadu is more of a kickboxer, you know? He's going to he's gonna stand and strike with you, but he doesn't strike. It's he's he's just disappointed me a little bit because he doesn't he doesn't like throw enough output, I feel like, you know, and I feel like it's cost him some fights. Do you agree? He's got a ton of he only lost one fight in the UFC, but he's got a ton of split decisions. A lot of fights are razor close when when he like fights, but like I think he's got three split decisions in the UFC alone. Yeah, and like I think he I can't even find my mouth. I need to change my mouse color. Like my fucking. Uh, You're losing the mouse color. Yeah, I I just can't find it anywhere. But yeah, I've loved on undefeated. Uh, yeah. I, I think he's fourteen and zero. I yes. can't even see because I can't find my mouse. There we go. Found it. No, but, no, uh, yes. Yeah, Dawudu's coming off a bunch of wins in a row, but he's coming off a two split decisions in a row. Um, and then he had that head kick knockout. I think 2019. Uh, there's like 50 seconds left. I forgot who, who he is. I, I'll look it up right now. It is Yoshi Nori Hori. Uh, so, yeah, he knocked him out with. I don't know who that is. 55 seconds remaining in the fight with a head kick. So, gotta respect that. Um, he won his last two, two before that in the UFC. Uh, and his UFC debut, he lost via guillotine choke. Uh, 39 seconds into the fight against Danny Henry. We both know who Danny Henry is. Um, Danny Henry. He, yeah, he fought Zubera to, to Kogov. Aren't you a fan of Zubera? Yeah, Tukogov, he's good, man. I like him. Yeah. Um... But, yeah, I just don't think he's going to be able to keep up with what Evlov is able to do. I know uh, Evlov, I think, didn't he fight on short notice against Nick Lentz? Nick Lentz. Wasn't that a short notice fight? Um, That or, could have been. I might have to double check that one, but that could have been. I'm, I'm double checking it right now. Um, Go to the fizzled. Yeah, it was supposed to be Grundy versus. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, or maybe, maybe Grundy's maybe. even tougher. I mean, excuse me, Evloeb's tougher than Grundy, so it's like you're getting replaced with a guy that's tougher. Yeah, that's brutal. Um, so yeah, I think he's got full training camp this time around. He, this is a nice. It's looking like a solid, active year for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he only fought once in 2020. He doesn't want to do that again. Uh, I know he he did beat Mike Grundy in that one outing, but he fought in January. Now he's fighting again in June. He's primed to fight. He could fight up to like four times this year. So I'm gonna take Evlov. Um, he could do it in a multitude of ways, but it's it's a good chance that it's a decision. Uh, Dawudu is tough to put away, but I'm I'm gonna go uh Mozart Evlov. Yeah, Evloev, I'm going to agree with you on this one then. Evloev, undefeated, 14-0, 4-0 in the UFC. Really high-level striker, plus 1.87 striking differential, 64% striking defense. Not to mention, fights at a Tiger Muay Thai. Um, he's also a really great grappler. He's a master of sports in Greco-Roman wrestling. Averages 2.7 takedowns per fight with 70% takedown defense. 
He's taken on Hakeem Dawadu, 5-1 and one in the UFC, only losing his debut and since has gone on a five-fight winning streak. He's a kickboxer with a 42-5 and five Muay Thai record. He has a plus 2.84 striking differential, 63% striking defense, and 85% takedown defense. This, high, this fight, to me, has Fight of the Night written all over it. I'm going to go with the more well, well-rounded fighter in Mazvar Evloev. They're both striking are high level, but Mazvar Evloev's uh, grappling background is just, is what's going to set him apart from I, this fight. He's got more ways to win the fight. And, uh, yeah. I, and his, 90, 90 plus percent of the time, I take the person with uh, more uh, ways to win the fight. All right, awesome. We're both agreeing. We're both going Mazvar, Evloev, and that one. We're going to move right into the next one. Lauren Murphy versus JoJo Calderwood. Um, I, I can't get this. Th- this fight, I cannot believe. It's two top five flyweights on a prelim. It's so disrespectful. It is their main card spot. Oh, my God. It's crazy. It's it's. It, I cannot believe it. I know the main card stat. But I, yeah, I know, but come on, dude. You can't. What's the you gotta put even Jamal Hill hasn't made a name for himself yet. He's been in the UFC for like a blink of an eye. I'm not gonna i I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna I mean, rather watch that fight, but I'm excited to watch that fight. So yeah. I can't I can't say shit. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren Murphy, four and one in her last this, five. This could headline the prelims. It least. could. You no, know, like that's what it should be going for. Yeah, it could make a chance. I don't know. We keep going though. I keep going to interrupt you more. Jeff. Lauren Murphy, four and one in her last five, very well rounded. Even striking differential, averages a takedown a fight, 70% takedown defense. Pretty good wherever the fight goes. She's taken on JoJo Calderwood, 3-2 and two in her first in her last five, coming off a really dominant win over Jessica I. Um, she doubled I strikes, doubled her output. She has a plus 2.19 striking differential, averages 6.5 strikes per minute. Also, um, 1.8 takedowns per fight at 55% accuracy. I yeah I, I'm this is one on the prelims that I'm more confident with. I'm gonna go with JoJo Calderwood in this one. Uh, I just think that she's better wherever the fight goes. I know I said that I might have said that for the last one, but I do think JoJo is better better on the feet, better on the ground. I'm gonna disagree with you. I think Lauren Murphy's better on the ground. Uh, to be completely honest, um, I know I know Cal like. It was a high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner, but she got subbed by uh, Jennifer Maya fairly easily. Was like you you remember that fight? Jennifer Maya. She decided to fight instead of wait for her title shot, and now yeah. she's got. She had to fight Jessica I, which was she won that fight, but it was a grueling fifteen minute fight, and now she has to fight Lauren Murphy. That seems like a number one contender fight. Uh, but it seems like JoJo seems to crack. Like, uh, I don't know. The deciding factor in this fight, since it's so close, it's very, like, we can, can, can you agree with me that it's a very close fight? Well, yeah, both people, both girls are top five, so. Yeah. Um, Lauren Murphy's super well-rounded. She's actually an underdog at plus 125, I'm seeing. Um. Jojo Calderwood, she's 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 definitely more of a striker. Um, she she throws some spinning attacks, and she's great at clinch striking. She's great at clinch striking. I think we could we could both agree there. Jessica, oh. I probably confirmed that for us too. Oh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I just think she cracks under pressure, and I think that Lauren Murphy is going to be able to like get it to the ground, and honestly, a good chance she subs her. Um, Calderwood has been sub before. Um, that's her biggest downfall, I would say, her submission defense. But yeah, it, the fight's close. I just, I, I can't go against JoJo Calderwood. You did give a good case for Lauren Murphy getting the advantage on the ground. Lauren Murphy has been at the top of 125 for so long. She's starting to, no, no I can't even what? What? I was like, she's like Tony Ferguson, where she can't get a title shot. I'm like, yo, give her a title shot. She keeps winning, you know. Yeah, and she's like, it's, it's only been four fights, and Tony won twelve in a row, so it's not like I could really com- compare the two. Is she thirty eight? Mm-hmm. Okay, she's still yeah, fighting yeah. at a very high level, though. 
She is, but I don't like to see that. Yeah. I don't like to see that. Um, that's also a big, that's probably, I didn't even mention that as a decider in my thing, but okay. Um, all right. We're disagreeing on this. Now one. you're going to. No, I'm going JoJo. I'm going JoJo. Dan's going Lauren Murphy. We're disagreeing on this one. Okay. We're going to move right into the next one. Eric Anders versus Darren Stewart. Yeah, so this fight had excitement written all over it when we saw it the first time. They mm-hmm. both hurt each other really bad. Darren Stewart almost got finished, and then Ander- Anders... Oh, other way. Idiot. What? Other way, I thought. Darren Stewart... I mean, Anders almost got finished, right? Well, they both almost got finished. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stewart rocked him. And I had a bet on Stewart, so I was super happy. And then... Anders rocked Darren Stewart himself. Yeah. So then I was like, shit. And then that illegal knee came, and I was like, <laughs> now nah, I got the hiccups. That got the hiccup. That's going to be fun. We might Thanks. have. We were if, if I get the hiccups, we're pausing. <laughs> no, no but, problem. Um, the camera keeps rolling, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> Anders. I'm going to I'm going to go with my original decision and say I took Darren Stewart in that original fight and they're fighting again. I know what happened happened in that last fight, but they both hurt each other, you know. Yeah. Um the odds in this, I think Anderson's the favorite because he was honestly on the brink of finishing the fight. If he didn't throw that knee, he might have finished that fight. Oh dude, it was ending. It was right it was getting close. Yeah. But I think that Stewart makes some adjustments and uh Maybe he gets the KO this time. Yeah, I'm gonna disagree with you on this one. I'm gonna. You have every reason to disagree. With you. Yeah, I, I feel like I need to learn from my mistake on this one. Last time these two face face though was it was a great fight. Stewart started strong, and then on Anders, where the fuck you say his name, really ended good. He ended up he was about to finish the fight, like Dan said, but both got the better of each other at some point in that first round i really like darren stewart he's really turned his ufc career around i always say this about him he started off very slow going oh for oh and three and one no contest to start his ufc career then went five and two um and then that one no contest i think stewart is gonna want to close the distance quick take the fight to the ground where he has a better chance of winning but i see anders going out there and doing what he did that first time out keeping it on the feet and just possible and ko tko yeah all right anything. that one's that one's easy we've seen this before anything can happen in mma we anything can agree there we will agree on that we're disagreeing on this fight i'm going eric anders dan's going darren stewart we're gonna move right into the next one drew dober versus brad riddell um fully experience of strike stri- like <laughs> like high level striking yeah th- um, yeah this fight is unbelievable drew dober three and two in his last five only losing to benil dariush and islam makachev his last three wins have all been by ko and both losses coming by sub so uh, some, the- some of them were brutal too he brutally knocked out nas rat have pack brass he he's another one of and and dude, how good is Nasrak Hat Press? How good is he? He's, he's unreal. Really good. He's really good. He's another um Drew Dober. He's another guy that has one of those really fun fighting styles. He likes to strike. He's got those heavy hands, but he is prone to getting submitted. We've seen him get submitted. His last four losses have all been by submission. He's taken on Brad Riddell, three and oh I'm not gonna submit him. <laughs> yeah, three and oh in the UFC. Another guy that likes to strike. Fighting at a, two of the best uh, striking gyms, in my opinion, in city kickboxing and Tiger Muay Thai. He is a plus 1.75 striking differential. He does get taken down a little too much, already getting taken down 14 times in his three UFC fights. Because they don't want to hit, they don't want to strike him. Yeah, hell no. This fight is razor close. I think it is very tough to tell. It is fireworks for sure. Yeah, um, this is fight of the night. night. This is awesome. better than I, I'm calling it. Now. Uh, well, dude, what was it, that Moreno Figueredo fight? That, there's so uh, much. Yeah, that's... But this is possible. This is possible. Um, and I do. The undercards. This fight is, I think, is going to stay on the feet. 
And I think it's really hard to, I think that it's really hard to stand with Drew Dober for three rounds and not get caught. So um, I'm going to go Drew Dober. Yeah. I mean, you didn't mention this, but what? what's it called? Um, Riddell has a 59 and 10 kickboxing record. Um, and it's like that, like, I can't even find this real record anywhere. Like, the closest I could find it was on Wikipedia. I was looking for, like, 15 minutes. To try oh, to find really? Kickboxing record. Riddell has a deep, 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 like, kickboxing, uh, kickboxing experience. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so Dover hits harder, but I think that Riddell is going to be the more technical of the two. Of the two. He's fighting out of elevation fight team. Um, I don't, is is Drew Dober coached by uh, Trevor Woman? Uh, Drew Dober fights out. Of, I don't know if he is actually. I know only certain people are trained by Trevor Woman. I don't know. I I don't know the answer to that. Um, yeah, this is good. This fight's just gonna be fireworks. I'm gonna say stay away, stay the fuck away yeah. from it. But. Um, I know, I know Drew Dober has boxing experience, pro, like pro he's, boxing. he's taking pro boxing fights, um, at some point, I don't know when, but he had a pretty extensive amateur career as well. I know. And his regular career is extensive too. 23 and 10. Yeah. Um, so it's it's tough, but I'm gonna take I'm I'm gonna take Brad Riddell. I think he really shows up and fucking shows his striking. Um, I know he, he's he's shorter and he's definitely shorter for the division. He's only five foot seven. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah, but um, Drew Dover is only five foot eight, so they're both shorter, stockier, fucking hard hitters. Yeah. So this is a good chance one of them goes to sleep. I, yeah, I. That's how I imagine this going. Um, great fight, awesome, unbelievable fight, fight though. Like the, yeah, this, the, like this is headlining the prelims, and now that I see it's headlining the prelims over JoJo and Lauren Murphy, I'm like, it makes sense. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, this, this fight is gonna, is be gonna be fucking so fun. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm gonna. That's great. Great fight right there to wrap it up. I'm going to watch every single one of these. You can't miss a second of this. Oh, uh, I don't think you can miss a single fight. Uh, I'm going Drew Dober. Brand's g- Brad. I called you Brad. Dan's going Brad Riddell. Brand. Brand. Like from... Uh, Elton Brand. Elton Brand. Brand from that uh, GOT. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, right. Brand, Brand Stark? Yeah, yeah. Ever heard of him? I'm going. Yeah, I heard of him, and then I heard the ending sucked. Actually, no, I watched the ending and was heavily invested in that show, and then it sucked. So. I only watched the first two seasons. Um, it was good though. Oh, don't it was it's great. It was great until the seventh, like the seventh season. You're like this show, they, they might shit it, and then guess what? They shit. The dark. It. I remember everyone t- talking about the dark episode. It was just like you couldn't see shit. I mean, that episode I enjoyed. Personally. Oh, did you? Yeah, but then I was like, what the fuck are they going to do in the next three episodes? And then they botched all three so bad. And I, I'm, I've just been so disappointed in HBO since. But, yo, if any of you, you guys are into HBO Max and shit and like some thought-provoking shit, I recommended it to Connor. Watch The Leftovers. Leftovers. Great show. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah, 2% of the Earth's population just disappears. But... Anyway, let's get let's keep going on these fights. We're gonna move right into the next one. Paul Craig versus Jamal Hill. Take it away, Dan. All right, uh, Jamal Hill. Uh, I know he's a little green, eight no to the sport, but he just knocked out OSP. So, um, what like, what can you say? What 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 can you say then? You know, like who has more experience than him? OSP. Yeah. He has a win over Daquan Townsend back in the day. Who doesn't <laughs> on the regional. It was on the regional scene. Oh, was it really a regional yeah. scene? That's hilarious. Um, what happened to in this fight against Kids Kilts and Abreu? I wasn't able to find that. I I think that was when he was bust. He had weed in his system. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, like, he won. You can't feel pain when you're on weed. 
Yeah. Me. You, you, you can feel pain when you're... <laughs> he, even, he even said, like, he wasn't smoking before or anything. He just... Uh... He took dabs. We, we, we made jokes was, about this. He was, that was him. in the car before <laughs> he walked in. <laughs> that was it. He walked in there. Yeah, that was it. That's so funny. But yeah, Paul Craig, um, looking at his last couple fights, um, this is... Uh, He's he's a sub guy. Um, he's gonna try to get this fight down to the ground. Uh, he has a submission win over Kennedy in in Juku. Um, he beat he has a submission win over Magomed Ankulaev. Wow, which is pretty impressive. Impressive. That's but crazy. He did get Kimura with with nine seconds left to Jimmy Crew. Um, so he can get submitted himself. Yeah, um, this guy's submitted some pretty high level guys, so I wouldn't be shocked if he if he be uh if he won this fight. But this fight is Jamal Hill's fight to win all day. Um, getting a call, me at that. Um, so yeah, he's on his last his last uh three fights. He's I uh, four fights. He's three zero oh, and one with uh split draw to Shogun Hua and then beat him up. Beat him up at the end of last year. But Shogun's like we both know Shogun's washed. Yeah. He's... Um, OSP is definitely less washed than Shogun. For sure. We can agree there too. Um yeah, I'm gonna take uh I think Jamal Hill just I know he doesn't have Jamal Hill doesn't have the most power. He's honestly not a a strong he's uh like, yeah he's he's, he's got like a lot good of boxer, but a lot of he, he, he's not gonna one punch knock you out no. he's gonna he's gonna have you against the cage for 30 seconds just throwing punches everywhere until you finally succumb to everything and just mentally break so yeah. i think he he does that he does that in like to like everybody so like i i got jamal hill i'm i'm a fan yeah me too honestly Paul Craig, 3-1-1 in his last five. He's fought some really great competition throughout his UFC career. A lot of wins come by finish, 12 subs, two KOs. Three of his four UFC losses have come by KO, so his chin is a little questionable. He's taken on Jamal Hill, 3-0, three, three one no contest in the UFC, basically four wins, though. He's got some really great striking. He has a plus 4.75 striking differential over the course of his uh, first four UFC fights, and he averages nearly eight strikes per minute, high-volume striker. And he's going to have a three-inch reach advantage on his side, too. I think this fight goes one of two ways. Paul Craig is gets the takedowns, is able to get the sub, or Hill is able to keep the fight standing and get the KO. We saw Jamal Hill get taken down six times in his fight versus Darko Stosic, but he was able to get right back on his feet pretty quickly. He, he got taken down, but he wasn't down for long. Um, so I'm going to go with Jamal Hill in this one. Um, Tough not to go with Jamal Hill. Yeah. All right. Next one, we got Damian Maya versus Bilal Muhammad. Bilal Muhammad, 4-0, oh, oh, no contest in his last five. Really, really well-rounded fighter, a plus 0.75 striking differential, 60% striking defense, two takedowns per fight at 85% takedown defense. Most of his UFC wins have come by decision. He's got some great cardio, gets better as the fight goes on. He's taken on UFC legend Damian Maya, 3-2 and two in his last five. With those losses coming from Gilbert Burns and Kamaru Usman, really high-level competition. He's obviously a grappler, gets 2.5 takedowns per fight. He is 43 years old now and has slowed down a bit. Um, still doing really well, though, especially for someone who's 43. Bilal's takedown defense oh, is yeah. other level. I think he's able to stuff his Damian Maia's takedowns attempts and is able to get the better of the striking exchanges. But I don't think that Muhammad gets a finish here. I think it's going to be like a unanimous decision victory. Um, see, that's that's tough because, all right. So I'm going to kick it off immediately and just say, remember the name. Bilal Muhammad is going to win this fight. Friend of the um, Yeah, his takedown defense is 85, percent which is pretty damn good. Uh, that's the only note I wrote about his takedown defense. But um, yeah. Looking at their their topologies, um. So, what's what's his name? Damian Maya went on three fight losing streak, losing to T Wood. He lost to Colby Covington, 
and he lost to Kamaru Usman, but that was in 2017 and 2018. Then he went on a three-fight winning streak, um, beating Lyman Good, Anthony Rocco Martin by a majority decision, so that was a close fight, and then Ben Ask- then he strangled Ben Askren. Uh, his last fight was in May of last year where he got kind of torched by Gilbert Burns, um, and then Gilbert Burns was able to get the title shot from there, so people are kind of, they're using Damian Maya as like a leap-off point, I'm going to start incorporating that word more too. Some mm-hmm. fighters are leaving around just to like leap up. You know, they want this. It's like a guy who's ranked like RDA was kind of like that for a little bit at welterweight. Point, right? He was a top five welterweight and they, they would pair him up with people with a better match, like Leon Edwards, for right, example, right, Colby right. Covington, for example, the that's name. how they all got in the top right. five. They beat RDA. Um, so for Bilal to reach the top seven, he fights uh, Damian Maya. Damian Maya, one of the greatest submission artists of all time. I think it's between him and DuBronx as the two best submission artists of all time. Uh, Maya wins right now because of just his sheer, like just the way he, he's beating people. Like, um, he submitted Carlos Condit in a minute. Like, he loves the rear naked choke, too. Like, uh, submitted Neil Magny, submitted Carlos Condit. He, and this was, like, when he was, like, in his late 30s, you know? That's um, like five, six years ago. Rick Story. Uh, you know, like, he – and he's pretty good at getting the fight to the ground. Uh, he actually has a submission win over Chael Sonnen too. He he was he he had mount on Chael Sonnen. This was like ten years ago, yeah. so I don't know why I'm bringing it up. It's not that relevant to what we're talking about. But he had Chael Sonnen in mount, I believe, and then he threw in a triangle choke from there and tapped him out. Um, so Damian Maya is, I. In my opinion, the great like the greatest MMA grappler, the UFC, or at least the UFC, eh, the UFC is the best. He's the greatest MMA grappler of all time because he has been able to stick with the times and stick with the evolution of the game. Uh, Bilal, though, it's just he's just a pressure machine when it comes to the feet, you know. Um, he's really hitting his stride as a fighter. And like we always say, this guy has a loss to Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. Um, we say that about so many people, but we say it for a reason. You know, he wins a lot of fights by decision. Um, truth be told, Bilal doesn't hit that hard. That's probably why Connor, that's why I think Connor is saying that he thinks that it's going to go to a decision. It's because Bilal doesn't, it's not like he hits like Anthony Johnson at welterweight, you know, like uh, I'm bringing back we- oh, crazy, uh, <laughs> crazy uh, <laughs> throwbacks, but who's like a 170. He's not like a Robbie Lawler type guy that'll like knock you out cold type deal. He's just going to pressure you and just throw a bunch of strikes your way. I think he's smart enough to not get taken down either. Uh, Damian Maya loves that single leg, and he's able to just drag you down to the ground. I think that Bilal is – he's a decade younger. He's 32. 32 is still prime of your career for sure. Uh, Bilal gets it done in this fight, and then he'll get the rank – he'll get the number seven next to his name. All right. Awesome. Then we'll get into some very interesting Bilal fights. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can't wait for that. All right, so we're both agreeing. We're both going Bilal Muhammad in that one. We're going to move right into the next one. Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz. Here you go, Dan. Okay. Um, I don't want to sound like one of those, oh, I'm so cool. I watched Nate Diaz since so long ago. Um, I'll, I'll tell you when I became really good fan, a really big fan of Nate Diaz. It was, um, it was the Rory Markham fight back at UFC 111, George St. Pierre versus Dan Hardy. Ever since then, I've been a really big Nate Diaz fan. Um, a couple fights after that, he literally just got slammed, slammed around for three rounds against uh, Rory McDonald. But then he moved back down to lightweight 
and had some impressive showings over there. He knocked out Taka, uh, no, he submitted Takanori Gomi, but he dropped him first. He submitted Jim Miller, but then he got his fight. He got his title shot, but got off absolutely demolished by Benson Henderson. And the the next fight people never talk about is he got TKO'd by Josh Thompson. Um, knocked out Gray Maynard, lost to RDA, uh, beat Michael Johnson, beat Conor McGregor, lost to Conor McGregor, and then since then he's only fought twice. Once was against Anthony Pettis, where he got that unanimous decision decision victory in which he deserved and the other fight was against Jorge Masvidal where he was getting his ass kicked for three rounds at least the first two really badly um and then we got Leon Rocky Edwards Leon Edwards is maybe the most overlooked slash underrated slash underappreciated fighter I have ever seen. This guy has gone through a lot of people. His UFC, he lost his UFC debut, but let's go after that. Seth Brzezinski, uh, ultimate fighter album. He knocked him out in eight second. Uh, so he won his next fight after that, lost to Kamaru Usman. Nobody knew Usman was going to become champion and a dominant champion at that. Um, he beat Albert Tumenov. We know Albert, who, who Albert Tumenov is. Uh, he beat Vincente Luque back in 2017. Um, he beat Cowboy. Um, the Gunnar Nelson split decision win. That was a little iffy back in 2019. But then he fought a nearly perfect fight against uh, – RDA, he kind of took a round off in that, in my opinion, in that fight. And, and then he had that. Then he was scheduled. He was scheduled to, to fight T Wood, and he's, oh, right. he was scheduled to fight Hamzat Shemaev three separate times. And then he finally got the opponent in Bilal Muhammad, and he poked him in the eye so bad he couldn't continue. So my, here's my conspiracy theory. Oh no, my my theory is that Nate Diaz oh, seized. Shit how underappreciated and how underrated that um, Leon Edwards is. And he knows that he's a badass. And he's like, fuck it. I want to fight this dude. I can see um, But there's a reason why Leon Edwards is a minus 500 to f- minus 600 favorite. That's what he um, is. He's a minus 550 favorite on our, on our shit for at least. Oh, my God. Um, it sucks to say. What do you open? To see, fucking. I respect Nate for taking this fight because Nate's trying to, you know, Nate's giving name. He is giving almost. He can he can potentially give household name status to, anyway. Leon Edwards. They're, they're still going five rounds. They are. It's they going to be a decent fight. Um, I'm going to see Leon Edwards coming out strong, maybe getting a knockdown or two over that first two to three rounds. Um, and then typical Nate Diaz fashion, he'll come back and win a round towards the end. Yeah. Um, Leon likes Leon does take a round off. I feel like in five round fights, well, at least he did the one of the times um, that I remember. So I think that the round he takes off is a round that Nate Diaz wins, but I think it, I don't think he. I don't think he finishes Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz is so tough, so tough to finish. He'll just get beat up for five rounds. But if he does finish it, you heard it here first. What? Um, it's gonna be a head kick. I mean, he was kick. finished the last time out against Masvidal, wasn't he? he, got, he got, yeah, but that was a doctor cut. Yeah. Oh, okay. Doctor stoppage. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. Yeah, so that's that, his, was, that was due to a cut. cut there every single time. Fuck that. Um, the New York uh, State Athletic Commission, you want to talk about the Nevada State Athletic Commission being bad? I think the New York State is even worse. Did you did you give your pick? Uh, I think uh, Leon Edwards, uh, 49, 45, 49, 46. Yeah, I'm going to totally agree with you. This is the most confident I'm feeling. Uh, it makes sense now hearing that he's a minus 500. But um, Leon Edwards coming off that eye poke, no contest. You want to get up real quick? What's up? You mind if I get up real quick? 
Yeah, what do you gotta do? I'm listening. Oh, okay. Uh, but he was on an eight fight winning streak before that, and I think he was being dodged left and right. And of course, like you said, Dan, your conspiracy theory, Nate Diaz takes the fight just because he doesn't give a fuck. Um, everything I just said about Bula Muhammad, it's the same for Leon Edwards, except better everywhere. He just grinds out the de- decision wins, but has great striking, heavy hands, and an amazing IQ. Changes it up and gets the takedowns too. Nate Diaz, on the other hand, besides being a total legend, he's a submission artist. 15 sub wins throughout his pro <laughs> career. Yeah. He's tough as nails. I think um, time might have finally caught up to him and all that damage. Um, that scar tissue, like you said before, opens up every single fight. He gets po- punched in the head. It opens I think we talked about that at a separate time. I don't think I mentioned that yet. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Well, exactly. And that, now it's always the chance that the doctor could stop it, basically, every time he fights. Um, yeah. So I'm confidently going Edwards in this one. Um, I'm confidently going Edwards as well. All right, cool. We're both agreeing. We're both going Leon Edwards, moving right into the next one. I mean, he's a huge favorite, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Davison Figueredo versus Brandon Moreno, two. Uh, Davison Figueredo, 4 0 and 1 in his last five, most recently coming off of that very close, short notice fight with Brandon Moreno back in December of 2020. He's got a BJJ black belt, some really crafty submissions, heavy hands. A uh, high energy fighter too. He's going to be taking on Brandon Moreno, three zero and two in his last five. Uh, he's also another BJJ black belt. Wins mostly by submission. I really like Brandon Moreno, but I think Moreno taking the fight on short notice like that really helped him. Uh, he had nothing to lose, and oh, absolutely nothing to lose. And Figueroa had to change his entire game plan on a week's notice. I think Figueroa. He would have won that round last time out anyway. So if he didn't illegally kick him in the nuts, um, that's what I'm saying. The, like the the kick to the nuts is what ruined the fight for him. But I think we saw Figueroa sh- kind of struggle like with fatigue a little bit in with that the cardio. Yeah, saw him humanized finally for sure. Um, so I mean, everybody's human in the UFC, so it's. That's it's good to see guys be get humanized sometimes. Oh, for sure. Um, I think that Figueredo has the advantage on the feet slightly and on the ground slightly. Where Moreno slightly, yeah. Um, where Moreno uh, has the advantage is the cardio in those championship rounds. But I'm gonna go um, with Figueredo get in, in this one. I think close fight though. I uh, I think this is going to be more one sided than the first one, and I can even see Figueredo uh, pulling off a submission in this fight, uh, where he like kind of like one of those Benavidez fights. It's going to take a little longer, but um, what's it called? I think he uh, he'll be able to get the finish. Yeah, totally. Um, F- Figueredo's been just an absolute animal, tearing through everybody. Uh, of recent, um, he beat the he. What he does struggle with though is um is takedown defense. He was taken down four times by Brandon Moreno in that last fight. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's that's not good. No, but I could see I I, I see a sub coming in this fight. Um, I feel I'm feeling it. Um. That was just an absolute war of a fight the first time they went at it. And uh, it was super fun to watch. It was five rounds like that. Um, But, yeah, I think that Figueredo has a full camp this time. And he's just just able to get it done, you know? For sure. Um... We're both agreeing. We're both agreeing yeah, now. I think we're both agreeing there. Uh, we're both agreeing. Da- we're going Davis and Figueredo in that one, and we're going to move right into the main event: Israel Adesanya versus Marvin Vittori. Two, uh, take it away, Dan. Yeah. So we have here, um, the champ who went up to try to be double champ. He tried. Uh, he strived for champ champ status. He ultimately failed. Yeah. Um, the way he would re- realistically get it is if he dropped down a weight, but 
him and Usman, they're, they're, they, they treat each other like brothers. They're like, they'll never fight each other. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's an issue. But uh, yeah, he's fighting angry Marvin Vittori, um, who's coming off of his, he was coming off a win over Kevin Holland most recently. I think that Adesanya, tell me if you agree with this or not. Yeah. I think that Adesanya is the best. It, he's better than Kevin Holland, but like he's the best version of Kevin Holland type deal in a way. Like it's know? just downgraded. Yeah, he's just yeah. like you know, like not to not to take away from Kevin Holland because Kevin That's Holland's like a top ten, fi- top five to top ten favorite <laughs> fighter for me, but like he's like a store brand style bender in a way. You know, um, not to be disrespectful, but he's a store brand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he gets hit way more than Adesanya. Yeah, he does. No, it's true though. Adesanya doesn't really get hit. Um, so Marvin Vittori, I think he's going to try to take this fight down to the ground. Um, that's that's his way of uh, trying to win the fight, in my opinion. Um, in the when Izzy fought. This was now in 2019 when Izzy fought Kelvin Gastelum. Gastelum was one for nine in total takedowns. Oh, is that? that was, uh, yeah. Against uh, against Jan, Jan Blahovic, who outweighed him by a lot, he got taken down three times, but still. Um, where's the Brunson one? In the Brunson one, Brunson went 0 for – Derek Brunson went 0 for 7 trying to take wow. him down. Um, in the in the first time, and now we'll go back to the for the first time they fought. Vittori was two of six on takedown attempts. Uh it was a split decision that uh Adesanya took in that fight. And so I think I went backwards right there. So that's kind of showing that Adesanya got better and better and better with his takedown defense. He's slippery when you try to take him down at 185 at least. 205, he got taken down that those fourth and fifth rounds, and those were big. Um, those were actually very big. But I'm going to – okay, so I'm going to point something out. In, uh, in Vittori's last fight, he got – like – I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but Kevin Holland rocked Vittori at one point. Do you remember that? It was like the third or fourth round, and he hit him with a straight right, and it hurt him. Yeah, he wanted to take that fight down desperately to the ground. Uh, Yeah, he was desperately trying to take that fight down to the ground, and he just couldn't do it. Um, So that's definitely an issue there. Um. I keep getting called, but yeah, I don't think he's the, like, even like, so if this was Derek Brunson, I'd be like, this is kind of a new Derek Brunson. I don't know. Maybe he could take Izzy down. Right, the- right. Um, Vittori's not as strong as a striker as, uh, as, as, um, Adesanya. I mean, he's not as much of a wrestler as, uh, even Brunson is or, uh, or Gastelum is like I think that Izzy is able to keep the fight standing, pick him apart, maybe get a TKO this time around. I think he wants to bounce back hard uh, after after losing that last fight. He's gonna he's he said at first I want to fulfill what and I want to do what Anderson Silva did and just take out contender after contender after contender. So let's see you do it. Um, yeah, I'm going to totally agree with you on this one, Dan. Uh, the last time these two guys fought back in 2018 in that split decision, um, Adesanya did get the better of Vittori on the feet, really picking him apart on the feet. Vittori did land some his shots, though. He was able to take the ground to the fight in the third, like you said. Uh, both fighters have gotten a lot better over the course of that time. But overall, I think the matchup is pretty much the same. Adesanya has the advantage on the feet, and Vittori is still capable of... Uh, taking the fight to the ground. But the difference maker in this fight, I think, will be the cardio. Vittori is known to fade as the fight goes on. The last fight was only three rounds. This one's five. Both guys are very tough. Um, 
I don't know if there's going to be a finish there. So I do see it going to like those championship rounds. So I'm going with Adesanya, like Dan said, just picking Vittoria apart on the feet and taking it to the fourth and fifth. That's what he's, I think he takes it for sure. I'm confident in that one. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident in that one as well. I think that Adesanya is a solid, solid, solid champion. He, like, when you rank the champions in the UFC, I rank him ahead of Jan. I mean... What about Usman? I rank Us- Usman's probably the greatest male UFC champion right now. Yeah. Um, We're going to be saying he's the best of all time at the end of this year. Yeah. I think. I mean, with the females, like, I think the best actual champion in the UFC is Amanda Nunes. Like, yeah. There's, uh, you can't disagree. Like, she's double defending belts, you know? Like, I get there's not that much competition at 145, but, but still, like, it's like tough. still, she's defending like two belts at once. Yeah. And the UFC should keep that 145-pound division I alive so. for a little bit longer. Wait till, if she loses. What? I say if if she loses, get rid of it. Amanda Nunes? Yeah, if she loses at 145, just get rid of the division, you know. Yeah. That's what's keeping it alive. Yeah. Um did we mention the Clarissa Shields? Uh that might have been beforehand. Yeah, so Clarissa Shields signed a 3-year deal to f- start fighting in MMA um uh for the PFL. Um She's going to be fighting in the same division as Kayla Harrison. That is going to get interesting. Yeah, that's going to be cool. uh, When they are standing, there is a good chance that Kayla Harrison could get knocked the fuck out. Um, I want to see... Uh, do I... Like, the UFC... I, ESPN owns the PFL, correct? Oh, I don't know. Well, they're all together on ESPN. Oh, they are. Okay. Then, yeah, then probably. Or uh, or they're all together on Fight Pass or something like that. I think UFC has the, the has some sort oh, of shit. like ownership of it. Oh, okay. I want them to bring over Cl- Clarissa Shields at one forty five to the UFC. She could become their like. I mean, dude, if Amanda Nunes boxed her, she would she would lose. You think I'm so? Sorry. Yes, like in a boxing match, in a right. U in an MMA fight, That's that would be fucking bomb. Yeah, Nunez is a black belt. Um, yeah, she's like a black belt. I would call her a black belt in every single thing that she does. Let's do it. Um, but Clarissa Shields is a an, an Olympic gold medal, uh, yeah. boxer, and yeah. she's undefeated boxing herself. Um, I think she's realizing that there's more money to be made in MMA as as a woman, at least. Because unfortunately, like what a great part of the UFC is that the women are just like, like think about it. Like um, some of our favorite fighters are females. You know, like we love seeing Valentina fight. Right. We love seeing. Um, Amanda right. Nunes fight. Um, right. personally, I'm a big Alexa Grasso fan. Um, I love we we both love seeing Mackenzie Dern fight because her jujitsu her jujitsu is just out of this planet, you know. Right. Um. So the like other sports might preach equality, but the UFC actually has it, and they're getting paid. They're getting ma- their own main events. Um, so that's pretty cool, you know. Right. Um, so I respect that. Um, so they could go bash, people could go bash Dana White on all of the past stuff he said, he said, but at the end of the day, he's kind of, he's kind of doing his thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, dude. He is. He changed his mind on all that. Remember he said that, he said all that shit that there never be. Woman will never fight in the yeah. UFC. And then, like he, like a year later, he was like signing Ronda Rousey. So yeah, he bought Strike Force. Strike yeah. Force, and it was like Liz Carmouche and Ronda Rousey for yeah. the belt. Yeah, she. He was like the biggest fan. Of, of oh, and 
Liz Carmouche had that standing rear naked and Ronda Rousey's head was like that. I was, I still remember I that. I remember the 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 Rousey days too. Those those were some crazy days. Dark times. Like you could say dark times, but like in a way it was like it was the worst. I mean, as a person kind of Yeah, yeah. But like when it came to like Her judo when she great. first started fighting and there wasn't this influx of talent like people like Macy Chiasson and just, after you say that I don't know like that was just so random I brought her up but yeah. like I'm thinking like people like uh what's her name Juliana Pena right. um and stuff like that like th- these people like they all caught up to her in competition you know mm-hmm. they all every single person caught up to her yeah. She was just like the first one out there, you know. Yeah, if she still, if she still fought in the UFC and fought in a in a decent gym, she would be a she would be a top ten bantamweight, top five. If I want to be really, 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 and she, I don't think she'd even be top five at bantamweight. Um, just seeing what Amanda Nunes did to her, good God! All right, we're wrapping it up. 